Hi, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. I've got a great tutorial for you today. Who has some scraps? Look at these. Every time I get a little bit left from my binding or anything, I put my strips in a basket because I'm always going to do some great project with them. Not that I uh, ever really get around to it, but I'm always going to do it. But this is the year of the stash buster. Now, for those of you who don't know what a stash is, a stash is all of your extra fabric. That's it's anything that you get, you know, when you get two yards for a project and you have a little bit left, that's where your stash is. So we've got all, all developed quite a stash really fast. And I have a stash buster for you this year. Look at this great little quilt behind me. This is a spider web quilt and they're just that's why we have the spider web up here because uh, you know we know it's not Halloween but this is the spider web quilt and I want to show you how to make it this is a very simple form of paper piecing don't be scared by that word paper piecing is not hard and this is a really simple form and a really fun way to do it so for this project you're gonna need your scraps now I'm gonna use a charm pack um, because it's you know I, I it's what I have and it works well but I also you know a lot of times we'll buy a random charm pack and we're not sure what to do with it. Well, this is a great thing to throw them in because you can put any fabric next to each other. You're also going to need some kind of solid for your middles. If you have a, a solid piece in your middle, then it makes the web pop. So you want that web to stand out. We also have the Wacky Web template right here, which is a new template for us. And this is going to become one of your favorite tools because you can put this together so many ways and do so many things with it. And these papers are available through us also. And we actually piece on these papers. And I'll show you how that's done. The other thing you're going to need, of course, is your rotary cutter. And you're going to need your iron. Look at this iron. This is my new Christmas present iron. We love this iron. And also, last but not least, at all is the lapel stick and we use this to glue the actual middle section of the fabric down to the paper. This was originally made for wardrobe malfunctions and things like that. Works great for that, let me tell you. But the other thing is, is that it's awesome for applique or any time you want to uh, attach something when you're going to sew it back together. It, this works great for that. It doesn't gum up your needle. You can hand sew right through it. It doesn't get hard. It's just awesome. So let's get into this a little bit. First thing what we're going to do we're going to start with our little piece of paper right here and we're going to cut out this middle block right here. So we're going to use our Wacky Web template here, right here, and we're going to get um, a charm pack size. Now this, any size square or any, any fabric, you can use any fabric you want, and, but it'll end up being, you'll need a five inch square, just like a charm pack because all of our templates fit for the pre-cuts. You know, we, we have this one. So see how this one lays right on here? It goes right, you know, you just put it in the corner right there. So really all you're going to do is you're going to chop off this side and let me scoot these things over. You're going to chop off this side. And then you're just going to chop this little bottom piece right here. This is the foundation for your, um, your, the beginning of your web, your paper piece web. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our lapel stick and we're just going to do a couple of lines on this paper like this. So we just put that right on there. And then we lay this on here. And we just, you know, just tap it on there and make sure that it stays on there. I mean, it'll stay on there fine. So then you need to gather up your scraps. And this is a fun part because you really literally, they used to do this in the old days. They did these out of um, phone books, old phone books, and they'd tear out the pages and make their patterns. And, um, and they, they made them with all the scraps of all their old clothing and everything like that. And they're so beautiful. And so the scrappier, the better. So what I've got here, I'm going to use some of these charm pack pieces. And this is really fun because um, there is no rhyme nor reason to this. You can see I'm laying this ruler on here. It's not at all straight. I'm just going to whack me off a piece. And then I'm going to whack off another piece. It doesn't matter how skinny or wide they are. This is going to be your favorite thing for using every single strip you can find. You'll use teeny pieces. You'll use big pieces. It's just, it's so much fun to put these together because you know, I used to throw away the little bits of scraps, but now that I do these webs, even those little bits will fit right on the little corners of the, of the web. So let me cut a few more of these so we can uh, do some of that. So see, and I'm stacking them up here. You can see I've got a little stack, you know, four or five of them here. Um, 
you know, you can see I have, a, I have a few. I generally don't cut more than four or five. It gets too wonky, but seriously for this, doesn't even matter. All right, so there we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our, um, our piece with our paper glued on, and we're gonna take one of these strips, and we're going to just lay it on here right sides together, and just match it up right with the edge of the paper, and we are gonna go over and sew this on the sewing machine. So you sew right through the paper. So let me get my foot turned over and I'll be ready to go. So we're gonna go right here and I am gonna just sew straight down this. Finish that off. And this is one of those times where you really need an iron close by. And so you're coming over here to your iron and you're going to flip this back and you'll want to press this every time. So that's how you end up with, with that piece right there. Then we're going to stick another piece on. And again, you lay it right along the edge. Whatever edge, whatever angle that edge is going, you're just laying it right along the edge and you're sewing a quarter of an inch. I tend to sew all the way down to the bottom just because um, just because it, you know, it, I, I just think it stabilizes it a little better. But you can see now here we have two pieces. So we're going to attach another one of these and we're going to put it right along that edge. Just keep going out. And you come over here and you're just going to iron that straight back. Now you can see I have a, I have one little, one little bitty corner there left. And what I can do with that, if I want something, let's find something really different to put on that corner. How about this brown piece right here? What I can do is I can lay this like this and then when I flip it over, it'll cover that point. Let me see if I can get one that's a little bigger make sure I cover it. So I'm going to put this, so really what I need is a piece that's about this big. This is so not an exact science, it's just really whatever pieces you have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plop that one right on that edge and we're going to come over here and sew that. There we go. And even, you know, even your quarter of an inch isn't crucial on this. I mean, this you're just putting them together. We're going to put another piece over here, right sides together, and start down the other side. Press it open. Let me cut up the last few of these pieces because there's some nice blues in here that I want to use. One of the reasons I kind of chose this pack to show you is that this is all from a same line, but they're, they're, it's really, um, it's one of those lines that you can hardly imagine would go together until you see it up here like this and then you're like, oh, that looks great. So this is Fiona Fancy by Riley Blake and it's just a great line of fabric. Look, here's a little one. I'm going to have a little piece in there. Gonna iron it open. Let me see here. Maybe I'll end it with this dark brown one. So you just keep adding these on. Now a way to, um, one of the ways to get a lot more of this done quickly is you can put a whole bunch, you know, glue a whole bunch of your middles on and then you can um, just chain piece them through, you know, one after the other and then, you know, iron, you know, like four or five or however many you want to do at a time, um, iron them out and then, um, and then they go together a lot faster. So then let me show you this. If we're going to turn this over now and you can see where the paper is on this right here. And what we're going to do is that paper then becomes our cutting line because this right here is not going to go together too pretty. So we want to make it so it goes together really nicely. 
So we're just going to lay this ruler here along the edge of our paper and we're going to trim this off, this little extra stuff, like this. There we go. And then across the bottom. There we are. Make sure your paper's straight. There we go. So then you end up with a piece that looks like that. It's really clean and tidy. It just, it just looks really, you know, the edges are sharp and perfect and it's going to go together perfectly. So let's just, let me just show you that. I have one here that I did before. Um, we'll just go through it again and I'll show you how we cut it. So we're just going to lay our ruler along the edge of the, of the paper. And then we're going to turn this again along the edge of the paper. Make sure your rulers, and a lot of people ask me how I keep my ruler in place. Well, a lot of times I'll keep that little finger off the ruler on the mat. That gives me some stability and it's, it's, um, it just helps you as you to keep your ruler in place. There's all kinds of uh, tips and tricks for that. There are all kinds of little things you can add to them and, and do to your rulers. I'm just going to pull this off. I'm going to scoot this down a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and line my ruler up on the paper. Slice this off. There we go. So now we have two of these here that are ready and this will make a half of our block. So look how they go together, just like that. And you'll put four of these together and it'll make a block. So this quilt goes together in big blocks. Uh, there's, there's other ways to set it. This is just the way I'm going to show you. You also want to make sure, uh, try and make sure that these line up. This edge isn't crucial. I have some edges here, you know, that aren't perfect. And, you know, because what you want is the look of the spider web and, and all, no spider webs are the same. They're all just a little bit different. So they don't have to be perfect. And, you know, this is just great for, for any of those projects where you just want to sit down and sew. So then what we're going to do is we're going to lay these right sides together just like this. You know, if it's really crucial to you that these match up exactly, you know, you can put a pin right there. If not, you can just take them over to your sewing machine and just sew a quarter of an inch right down the side. And I'm sewing right through this paper. Every time I sew through this paper, that needle going in and out perforates it. So when to take it off, it's going to be a piece of cake. And there you go. All right, so now we're going to bring this over to the, I'm going to trim these threads and then bring it over here to the ironing board. We're going to open that up and we're just going to press this flat. And then this makes a half of our square. So once we get our square together, I have a square here. Here's a square all together. And I mean, it's just such a fun little shape. I just love looking at them. I love all the colors, how it mixes all up. And then um, before you're going to sew it together on your quilt, you're going to want to take these paper pieces off. So what I do is I have a, um, a scissor somewhere. Here we go. I have one of these little um, scissors. You can use your regular scissor. And I just gently drag my blade across these pieces so I can get my, um, my thumb in underneath. I mean, you can do it any way you want. This is not a rocket science. This is not a have to. <laughs> this is just a something, you know, an easy way to do it. And see right there where, where those seams are, you've perforated it with your sewing machine needle so it all comes off. This is a great job for your grandchildren, by the way. <laughs> they can sit there and peel your paper. It's awesome. And you don't actually have to do this before you attach the blocks. You can do this after your quilt is done and just sit, sit down in, in front of the TV and, uh, you know, put a, put a good old movie on and, and, uh, and see. Now, I want you to notice this, too. Now, what I'm doing, these blocks have all been glued to this paper, but look, look how easily this comes off. It's not, it's not any kind of work, you know, getting that off of there. It just... It held it on perfectly for as long as I needed and then it just comes off so nicely. All right, so we're going to pretend that all this paper is off 
and we're going to attach these blocks to our quilt. So here's how they're going to go. Like this. Let me get a pin. Let me grab a pin over here. My arms aren't long enough for this job. There we go. All right, so we're going to stick this up over here. Oh, goodness. There we go. So you can see how this is going to look when it all starts coming together. And I have another one here. And it's going to go together here. What's fun about these scrap quilts is they very quickly go from, um, and here's my half a block. You can see how that's going to finish that off right there. Once we get two more of those done, it's going to finish this, this web off right here. There we go. Well, that will actually fit up in there once those seams are taken in. I hope you can see what I'm getting at with that. But what's wonderful about these stash quilts, these, you know, these scrappy quilts and these paper piecing quilts is that these very quickly become an heirloom because you're using pieces from all the quilts you've made. You're using little scraps of things, maybe even clothing, and it just becomes a wonderful heirloom project. Goes together very quickly and easily. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.